History. We're going to do Manifest Destiny in five minutes. So stick around. Here we go. Giddy up for the YouTube learning. Manifest Destiny. So Manifest Destiny is a term that you're going to have to know something about if you're in a U.S. history course. And certainly if you're walking around on the planet, it's part of a historical roots. You should know about it. Um, Manifest Destiny isn't really a what. It's a huh. It's a huh in the sense of that it was really never written down. There's no written policy. There's no law. There's no amendment. There's nothing in the Constitution that really says anything about manifest destiny. Manifest destiny is actually a word that originates from a reporter. It's always the reporters. John O'Sullivan, I think in the 1840s, um, basically writes about manifest destiny as it relates to, I believe, the Mexican War. Kind of this idea, and there's really kind of three parts of manifest destiny. Um, number one is really the sense of kind of privilege, of kind of like uh, thinking as white, European Americans um, in the early 1800s, that we were somehow kind of on a venture that was kind of providence, that was kind of God's light on earth. And uh, if you see the picture, you can see it quite clearly in the painting that uh, there's like an angel hovering over us because we're special in that sense. Um, there's also, I think, this drive, it's like Jacksonian democracy or maybe it's old Europe, but this kind of idea that we are kind of spreading democracy and really in an agrarian way, that we're going to be able to kind of revive old Europe before the kind of this big city life and really kind of have like a democracy on the farm and bring that across the uh, uncivilized barbarian Frenches out west. Yeah, okay. And I think the third one is that it's inevitable, that it's in the cards, it's the destiny part, that there's no stopping it. There's no stopping us now. I'm not singing for you. Um, and I think you blend those three, and I think that it's just kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy. I mean, you have to realize that it's not universally supported in the country. It's really a democratic idea. Maybe it's the expansion of slavery. But the Whigs and Northerners were always a little hesitant about moving out west, and I think really... I don't know why, but they were. Um, if you're looking at concrete examples, you're going to have to YouTube other stuff or read, for God's sakes. Um, but definitely look into uh, the Northwest Ordinance of 1787. I call it the legs of Manifest Destiny, the process for expanding. Mama get pregnant. That's what I call it sometimes. Definitely the Louisiana Purchase um, and the doubling of the United States under Thomas Jefferson when he adopts this kind of loose interpretation of the Constitution in order to get that land, really bypassing Senate approval and taking executive action. Who says presidents never use executive action? Uh, definitely the, the annexation of Texas is a big deal. The Mexican um, secession from the Mexican War. Um, we bounced seven babies out of that sucker eventually. Um, I'm not going to list all seven. Let me see if I can do it really quick. You got California, you got Nevada, you got Utah, you got New Mexico, you got parts of Colorado, you got parts of Wyoming, and maybe Arizona. Maybe I said one twice, but that's definitely a big win. The Oregon Treaty up in the Northwest. Um, you could do work on trail. You could do the Native, the Native American. American Wars, the Dawes Act. There's tons of vocab and events in there that are kind of like the lifeblood of Manifest Destiny. But people will even take it further. Manifest Destiny can also include like imperialism and kind of this idea going from the Monroe Doctrine and kind of being the protectorate of the Western Hemisphere, like very paternalistic kind of thing. Um, and that we're civilized and they're not civilized. And that goes to Hawaii. It goes to Cuba, um, violating the Teller Amendment with the Platt Amendment, definitely in the Philippines. Um, there's evidence of it all around the world. And then definitely you can even argue like the space race and the moon and we have a car on Mars and all of this is kind of this manifest destiny idea. Um, whatever it is, it definitely led to the Civil War. You don't want to forget the effects of manifest destiny go into the idea of it brings the issue of slavery out west, which is going to lead to what Missouri Compromise, Compromise of 1850, Fusion of Slave Act, all this nonsense that's going to have to get served up in the Civil War um, to solve that. Uh, Kansas, Nebraska, Popular Saturday, John Brown, we could talk forever. But definitely know that manifest destiny is controversial 
controversial that um, not all Americans were behind it, but it's definitely something that occurs in the mind of, I guess, nationalism or spirit, whatever you want to call it. And it's definitely going to draw blood. You know, Manifest Destiny leads directly to uh, the dismantling of the Native Americans and putting them on reservations. Uh, uh, the Mexican War. Uh, we could talk like that forever. <laughs> Manifest Destiny! Hopefully you got it, you got the major idea, and uh, now you're gonna go learn and do some more of that on the YouTubes! There you go guys, click my face!